Do you know the average lifespan of sickle cell disease is 40 to 60 years of age? It is one of the most common inherited hemoglobin disorder affecting the humankind throughout the world. My name is Dr. Riaz Ahmed. I am Director, Hematology and BMT at Max Saket Super Specialty Hospital. Let's talk on sickle cell disease today. So what is sickle cell disease? To understand sickle cell disease, we must know what is the shape of RBC. Normal shape of RBC is round. But in sickle cell, the shape of RBCs changes to sickle or the crescent shape. And hence, the movement of this sickle cell within the capillaries is hampered. When these sickle cells are in the capillaries, they get stuck and they will obstruct the flow of the blood, causing all the problems what the sickle cell is doing. Suppose this obstruction is within the brain, it can cause confusion or it can cause the major problem that is stroke. If it affects midbrain or if it affects the forebrain or if it affects thalamus, depending on the site of its obstruction, the various symptoms can be there. It can be life-threatening or it can cause severe morbidity. Even it can cause vision loss. So we should know this sickling, why does it happen? This is inherited disorder. Generally, it runs within the families. So a baby generally inherits from the father or the mother. And all the symptoms starts from five to six years of age when the adult hemoglobin is formed. Any fever, any stress, any dehydration can trigger this normal round cell RBCs to change its shape into crescent shape and thus causing the problem. So the symptoms of these sickle cells can start as early as four to six years and can last lifelong. Hence, the management of sickle cell is very important from beginning to the end. As we have discussed, sickle cell is an inherited blood disorder. That means it runs within the families. It's very important how to diagnose it early. So when you have symptoms of sickle cell like anemia, joint pains, acute chest syndrome, stunted growth, you just get evaluated by your pediatrician on a simple HB electrophoresis or hemoglobin electrophoresis or HPLC can diagnose sickle cell. Once the percentage of sickle cells is de determined within the patient, we can label them as sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease. When these sickle cells are in more than 50% concentration, it is mostly sickle cell disease. Now, once we have diagnosed sickle cell disease via HB electrophoresis or HPLC, that is high performance liquid chromatography and has labeled a patient as sickle cell disease. Now, we should know what it can cause. Now, sickle cell is a blood disorder and as we know, blood flows from head to toe. So, wherever these sickle cells are formed, that body part will get affected. Suppose the sickle cells are getting sickled within the capillaries of the brain, what it can cause? Generally, patient will present with confusion, headaches, chronic headaches sometimes and in severe cases, it can cause stroke. Stroke, as we know, can cause paralysis. It's a severe morbidity. Now coming to the second part, that is anemia. Once the shape of the RBC is changed, body is bound to get rid of it. It get into the spleen and get sequestered there and body eliminates it. So you have loss of hemoglobin and you present with low hemoglobin and pallor. Second, once you know that the hemoglobin is getting destroyed, the shell of the RBCs form the basic core structure for the stones and the patient can develop gallstones. So from confusion to stroke to anemia to gallstones, these are varied presentations. The most important complication of the sickle cell disease is pain crisis. So in the joints, we have got capillaries that is U-shaped. Usually, the round shaped RBCs flows freely, but the sickle cells gets stuck to these U ends of the capillaries and get thrombosed there. Once the blood supply is stopped, the oxygen delivery of the RBC is deprived and it causes severe pain, acute pain. And usually this is triggered by some pain, some stress, dehydration, any fever or infections. Now we should know this sickle cell disease starts from four to five years of age, okay? So any child with joint pains, anemia, jaundice, acute chest syndrome, Splenic sequestration should be evaluated by a pediatrician or a hematologist for early diagnosis and management. 
So what is management of sickle cell disease? It includes medical management, bone marrow transplant and also monoclonal antibodies. Medical management mainly in terms of giving antibiotics, analgesics, keeping the patient well hydrated, folic acid, hydroxyurea. Monoclonal antibodies prevent the sickling being happening and it increases the longevity of sickle cell patients to almost 50 to 60 years. Bone marrow transplant is a method in which we can cure a few segments of patient. So we should understand when this patient should consult us, when they have chronic headache, chronic pain, anemia or abdominal pain or tachycardia or jaundice, the patient should consult a pediatrician or a hematologist in their local area. If you find this video informative, please share your thoughts or comments in the comment box given below. Thank you.